Good evening everyone, my name is Miguel Fuentes and today is uh, Wednesday, December, yeah, December uh, the 19th, I'm sorry, yeah, no, the 18th. Um, <clears throat> so today, I well actually, you know, you know, I uh, have decided that um, next, starting next week and a week after, you know, uh, during New Year's, I am going to be taking a break from YouTube, um, just to seek the face of God and to really, you know, what what, what the Lord want me to say, um, you know, or, or what topic that the Lord want me to say, uh, but I definitely will be preaching on Sunday, so Monday through Saturday, I'm not going to be posting any videos except for Sunday, so just, just be aware of that, um, yeah. So, <clears throat> we're going to be concluding this Bible study series on the book of James. So, we're going to be reading uh, chapter so chapter 3 through chapter 5. So, I know this is going to be a pretty long one. So, so you know, please bear with me. So, before we get started, let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are holy, you are mighty. God, we, we, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us the opportunity, Lord, to preach your word, to teach your word, um, to endure sound doctrine, Lord. And we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that let your word be done on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, God, I just thank you, Lord, for uh, all that you have done. And uh, if you have sin in our hearts, Lord, we repent of it, Lord, and wash us and clean us, Lord, with your blood. And forgive us, Lord, for what we have done. And uh, we praise you, Lord. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Um... Yeah, so chapter 3, James chapter 3. And um, I'm going to be reading out of the modern English version. Um, it's fine. <clears throat> Alright, James chapter 3. My brothers, not many of you should become teachers. Knowing that we shall receive the greater judgment with all error in many ways. But if any man does not err in word, he is, perf he is a perfect man and able also to control the whole body. See how we put bits in the, in the mouth of the horse, horses that they may obey us. And we control their whole body. And observe ships, though they are so great and are driven by furious winds, yet they are directed with a small, with a very small rotor wherever the captain pleases. Even so, the tongue is a little part of the body, and boasts great things. See how great a force a little fire kindles. The tongue is a fire, a world of evil. The tongue is among the parts of the body to find the whole body and setting the course of nature on fire, and it is set on fire by hell. All kinds of beasts and birds and serpents and things in the sea are tame or have been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unreally evil full of deadly poison. <clears throat> with it will, will uh, with it we bless the Lord and Father, 
and with it we curse men who are made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth produce blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring yield at the same opening sweet and bitter water? Can the fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a vine figs? So no, so no spring can yield both salt water and fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show this. Sorry, let them let him show his works by his good life in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strive in your hearts. Do not boast and do not lie against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but in earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envying and strive, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is formed above is first pure, then peace. Uh, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrites. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in pieces by those who make peace. So we see here in chapter 3 about taming the tongue. Now, as believers, we should be we should be, um, be being careful of what we teach in the pulpits or in online ministry like YouTube or or any other online church ministry that is out there. Because once it's go, you know, posting on YouTube, you know, and lots of people saw it, you know, and and a, and a lot of people will expose you. So even the Lord will judge you because teachers always often are receiving greater judgments because they taught something wrong. And for me, I am open to uh, correction. I am open to rebuke. I am open to to um, to to um, you know to discuss and to reason and to uh, look at scripture. You know. And, and stuff like that because that, that's the important part of, of 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 learning is that you are learning how to understand the word of God and how to interpret it uh, properly because the tongue is a very dangerous weapon and James gave us a lot of good examples such as a horse such as a ship and we see that the tongue is very deceitful. Either they speak blessing or or you just speak curse on a on a believer. And and that, you know, the apostle Paul says that, you know, do not curse, but bless. You know, bless these people. And um, you know, our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual paladies. You know, is that powerful? Okay. And so we see uh, the next section it's called a wisdom from above. We, we must seek the Lord for wisdom. That's why in James chapter 1, we see that, you know, whoever needs wisdom, sorry, whoever needs wisdom, call upon God, because God will, God would give you wisdom without hesitant, you know. So I think I, th I think that does, that's very, very important. Uh, wisdom is very very important uh, among the body of Christ today. Okay. Chapter four. Let's continue on. Where do wars and fights among you come from? Do they not come from your lust that war in your body? You lust and 
and you do not have, so you kill. You desire to have and obtain. No, sorry. Uh, you have to, and you desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war. Yet you do not have because you do not do not ask. You ask and you do not receive, because you ask amiss, that you may spread it on your passions. You adulterers and adulteress, do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever there will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do, <clears throat> do, do you think that the scripture says in vain he yields jealousy for the spirit that lives in us, sorry, that lives in us, pardon me, but he gives more grace for this reason it, it, it says God Resist the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit yourselves to God, resist the, la, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Grieve and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning. And your joy into de dejection. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Do not speak evil of one another, brothers. He who speaks evil of his brother, and judge his brother, speaks evil of the law, and judge the law. If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is a who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? Come now, you who say today or tomorrow where we will go into this city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? It is just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanish away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, you, uh, sorry, we shall live and do this or that. But now you are rejoicing in your boastings, all, sh uh, all should rejoice, rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, it is sin. That's the end of chapter 4. Now, this is a pretty interesting chapter. Pretty interesting chapter. Those who are friends with the world is the enemy of God. We hear less about talking this type of subject than anything else. I don't think Joel Olsen is not preaching that 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 uh that sermon very much. But you know, as I reflect on this on this chapter, you know, it is very, very important to really understand what the world is. See, the world has a God, and that God is Satan. And that we as believers should not be involved, or matter of fact, shouldn't, shouldn't be um, affiliated with the world. Uh, you know, we ought to remember that we are citizens in heaven once we are born again. Once we are saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. You know, you gotta understand that. If you do things the opposite for what Scripture taught us, 
You know, that's hypocrisy. You can't do both. You can't serve the world and God. Either you choose God or you don't. Because there is no middle ground one uh, in the biblical Christianity world. You know, if you want to be a soldier for the Lord, you, you got to forsake the world. You know, uh, I'm not saying go forsake your job. You know, if the Lord wants you there, keep it. But understand that it is by our responsibility that we should be examining ourselves to see that we are in the faith. If we love the world too much, you know, that, that you know, God is grieve and that you need to repent. And, and, and thirdly, you know, the world is full of wickedness, just like the days of Noah. You know, we see the falling angels, you know, having sex with, with women and having a uh, give birth to giants or uh, what's it called uh, the Nephilims I think I think I pronounced that right and um, it's bad you know it's totally totally bad and and I like how later on in verses 6 through uh, 8 you know God hates pride but yet God gave grace to the humble we ought to be humble we ought to submit ourselves to the Lord. We ought to resist the devil and he will flee from us. We ought to draw near to God. That's the, you know, that is the most fundamental part of the Christian walk. Is that you are trying through, through the power of the Holy Spirit to draw near to God. And to be mature. And to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And then later it says, judging the brother. Talk about don't speak evil against your brother. Yet too many times we, we heard this phrase, uh, judge not unless you are judged. You know, that that's referring to, I think, Matthew chapter 6 or chapter 7, somewhere, somewhere on that line. And James confirms it in chapter 4. And, and this is the reason why I don't, you know, do exposing videos unless, you know, unless if, it, unless if it's a, you know, Jehovah Witnesses or Mormonism or Hinduism or any other religion that is, that is a false religion. You know, I don't speak evil against another brother. You know, if I have problems with them. Yeah, I can talk with them one on one, you know, con all my concerns um, and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> last one, chapter five. Come now, you rich man, weep and howl for your for your mysterious that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupt. And your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are car-rotted. Uh, and their car-rottedness will be a witness against you. And will eat your flesh like fire. You have stoned up treasure. Sorry, you have stored up treasure for the last days. Instead, the wages that you kept back by fraud from the laborers who harvest your field are crying, and the cries of those who harvest have entered into the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived in, lived in pleasure on the earth and have been way wandered. You have nauseated your hearts as in a day of slaughter you have condemned and killed the righteous man and who does not resist you 
Okay. Therefore, be patient, brothers, until the until the coming of the Lord. Notice how the farmer waits for the precious fruits of the earth and is patient with it until he receives the early and late rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is drawing near. Do not gamble against one another, brothers, lest you be condemned. Look, the judge is standing at the door. Our brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an, exa as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them happy who endured. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the purpose of the Lord, that the Lord is very gracious and merciful. But of all things, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven, nor by the earth, nor by any other oath, but let your yes be yes, and your no be no that you do not fall into condemnation. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone married? Let him sing per, uh, psalms. Is anyone sick among you? Call him, sorry, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will rise him up. And if he has committed any sin, he will be forgiven. Confess your faults to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effects, the first prayer of the righteous man establishes much. Elijah was a man subject to natural but, uh, natural passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it may not rain. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. And he prayed again, the sky give rain and the earth brought forth its fruit. Brothers, if any one of you strays from the truth and someone corrects him, let him know that he who converts the sinner from the error of his ways will save a soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And that's the end of the book of James. Now, the last part of this, this book, as I read this, as I, as I meditated upon, the, upon, upon this chapter, is that Warning to the rich. The first part. And so many times, so many times, we see how God, uh, not only, uh, you know, God, you know, by His Word, has some good things about wealth. And there's some verses that talk about the bad things of wealth. And then this is one of them. If you're going to be rich, at least pay your workers. If you're going to be wealthy um, in business, either you got small business, an online business, whatever, you know, don't let don't let your riches be the main source of your problems. Because if you have you know, really understand that. Being a rich man is pretty hard to get into the kingdom of God. Even Jesus says the rich man is very, very hard. Because it's like a camel going through the eye of a needle. You know, it is very, very hard to get into heaven if you're really, really rich and really, really wealthy. And so, you know, be 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 conscious of what you're doing. Uh, always put God first. You know, if the Lord tells you to give away a ten thousand dollars of your money to to missions be obedient and do it 
it's for your own good, you know, or, or, or giving away a million dollars to a church nearby or to a missions field um, that that are in need so that they can uh, spread the gospel in, you know, in Ethiopia, just for example. So there are some good parts about wealth and there are bad parts about wealth. There are their pros and cons. And the next thing that we see is patience and prayer. Um, you know, um, I've been, I've been, you know, been suffering from uh, from type one diabetes for for a really long time, six six long years. Not because I deserve it. Not because I, you know, drinking well. Not because I've been eating a lot of unhealthy foods. It's just the pancreas stopped working, and then my my immune system attack it's you know, attack my own body basically. That that's what called a autoimmune disease. Is that the you know is that the the white blood cells attack my pancreas to the point where I'm not producing any insulin, and so you know I suffered from it. I, I really do. You know I got you know uh, what it's called. I got to uh, prick my finger eight times a day, every day. I got to take four to five shots every day. You know, all these things are very, very, you know, bad. You know, it suffers. I'm, I'm suffering. Um, the only thing that keeps me alive is through insulin. If my blood sugar is too high, I get into what's called... Uh, diabetic keto keto acidosis, which there's a lot of sugar in your blood system to the point where your organs going to damage, and uh, you know it's going to be weeks and weeks or months to really um, start having symptoms of organ failure and all that stuff. So that's very very important for me. To understand that I gotta take care of myself. I gotta take, you know, I gotta check my blood sugar to the point where, you know, I hope that my blood sugar is right, you know, in in the right range, you know, um, you know, I, you know, I, I don't do diets. Because diets pretty much bores me. You know, I keep eating the same stuff every day and it, you know it's, it's bored me you know i'd rather count carbs and take in the right amount of insulin to take amen so uh that's all i got for today folks i uh, hope that this is a blessing to you i hope that this really change your perspective of things so starting let's see next week uh for yeah next week and uh, hopefully this coming, I'm looking at my calendar right now. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be off next week, except for Sundays, which I'm going to be preaching. So I just want to get that time to really seek the Lord and what the word for the New Year's is and what the Lord want me to do next year, uh, Lord willing. So... Again, thank you guys for watching. May God bless you, and I'll see you guys again next time.